Testing. 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 Oh, we can start now. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Intan and this is Junior Razak CEO Series where we bring to you only the top from the industry, the cream de la cream, so to say, to share with us on how they have made it big and how we in the future can do grand in the real world. And today we have with us a superwoman with 26 years of experience in the professional world spanning from Australia and also Malaysia, Rafiza Ghazali shows us that your qualification in finance, audit and the likes does not mean that your end game has to be in a cubicle in some audit firm. Because Rafiza diversifies. She was in Time Derby, heading the innovation team. She was in Danaharta in corporate planning. And then she was the chief financial officer, the CFO in Velasto Energy Berhad, which is a leading oil and gas company, and also in RHB Investment Bank. And today, Rafiza is now officially making her mark in Malaysian startup scene as the group CEO for Cradle Fund Sundarian Berhad. But ladies and gentlemen, more than that, on top of everything, and on top of this spectacular portfolio, Rafiza is also a loving wife and a mother of three stunning children. I know, right? How did she manage to juggle everything? What makes Rafiza tick? To answer that, we have Rafiza with us today to share her insight with us. Hi Rafiza, how are Hi, you? Hi thank you so much. Yeah. So, how are you feeling? Are you excited? Good, very good. How, good. how about you? I'm super pumped <laughs> to get the ball rolling. So to start, right? Yes. So in Junior Raza, I was a leadership student and in class, we learned a lot about how a person's accomplishment in life, how a person's success can be a byproduct of their upbringing, their environment. So meaning that the way you grew up, how you grow up, makes who you are today. Mm. So if we can start with the story of your origin, mm. what was your childhood like? Growing up, what do you think has influenced the values that you have today? Okay. I remember grow growing up as one of the best moments of my life. Carefree, no problem, no bills to pay. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about what to wear and things like that because life when I was uh, 10, 8 is a lot simpler. We don't have handphones, we don't have gadgets, we don't have to worry about who's wearing better shoes. So to me, it was a carefree time. And my parents, uh, you know, uh, and I really appreciate this, they allow me to experiment with a lot of things. I was, I was quite a naughty kid, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I used to cycle everywhere. I used to play with my friends. We would go out, we would go into the bushes. We will be looking for snakes, you know, because we don't have time. TV only started at 5 o'clock when I was at that age. So we were playing with simple, simple things. We have to make our toys. We can't go to Toys R Us or we can't go to... So a lot of experiment and, you know, my family encouraged me to do new things. I remember even when I was a girl, I used to love building those small aeroplane models you know oh. they never said that oh you're a boy uh, you're, you're 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 not a boy you can't do this you have to play with dolls no they they, they allow me to experiment and that's I think that sort of influence when I, you know, after graduating with an accounting degree, even though I graduated with an accounting degree, but when looking at potential jobs, like you mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm not just looking at audit firm. Of yes. course, you know, I started out with an audit firm, but here I am, nothing to do with, um, you know, audit or accounting, you know, or, yeah. So it, you have to open up your mind. You have to, number one, believe in your passion, believe in your purpose, believe in what you believe in. And that's the reason why I took this job and I fought uh, for this job is because I really believe that, you know, the startups can really contribute to the economy and here I am. Thanks. Wow, believe in what you believe in. Oh, I love that. You know, to take on your courage. I definitely need to build more on that. <laughs> now, moving on. So you took office in June, sometime in June this year. Yes. And on top of that, you were taking office in the middle of a global pandemic that turns the world topsy-turvy. Mm. But before we dive into your leadership ups and downs, mm. can you tell us a bit about Cradle Fund? What is its mission and what does it aim to bring to Malaysian startups? Okay. Cradle uh, is a uh, Sundar and Berhad company. So we're not a government uh, part of, well, we are part of the government, but, but we're still a private company but we're 100% owned by the Ministry of Finance. Uh, but we report to the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. So the minister there is, I'm sure you all know, is YB Kairi Jamaluddin, yes. who is a strong advocate in science, technology and, you know, and innovation. So we report to them and uh, 
founded in 2003, so we've been around for 18 years, uh, close to 18 years, and we are what we call it the early stage uh, startup funding, uh, you know, funding government-linked uh, corporations. So we get money from the government, uh, you know, every year, and then what we do, we provide grants to those who are in the early stage startups. Um, we have funded over 1,000 uh, startups. Some of the notable names, uh, My Taxi, well, which oh, is yes. now known as Grab. Uh, we have, you know, like Warp, uh, uh, Superhands, uh, Store Hubs, um, yeah, the Lorry. <laughs> the, the, the name is endless. You can go <laughs> to our website and, you know, all the names here. Almost. Uh, I would say almost a third of the startups uh, in Malaysia are probably either funded by us. We also provide what we call it the coach and grow uh, program, uh, and and either they are grant recipients of us or they are the participants of our coach and grow program, which is another of our landmark uh, you know program at Credo. So yeah, it's a small outfit. Uh, we've got about forty people. Um, majority of them are much younger than me. Um, so we meet a lot of startups. Uh, we meet the communities. We meet uh, the universities. We work with their research institutes because uh, some of the startups are also spin-offs mm. of these universities. So we also, uh, you know, could provide grants to them. All right, so Rafiza, whenever I hear the word startup ecosystem, right, mm. my mind immediately drives to the Silicon Valley in the US, you know, the home of tech giants like Facebook, Snapchat, all these applications that we nowadays cannot live without, mm. unfortunately. But then, what about the startup scene in Malaysia? Do we have a similar goal, say, to establish ourselves as the Silicon Valley of South Asian, for example? Yeah. What is the goal for us, the big picture for us? When you look at about the ecosystem, right, mm. it all depends on, number one, on the level of development of the country. So an ecosystem in Singapore is very different from an ecosystem in Bangalore. Uh, you know, you have, uh, in fact, in Africa, there's actually quite a lot of startup ecosystem which we don't hear of, but it's very much, you know, catered towards um, the country. So you can't really compare. What works for Jakarta, for example, or even Bandung may not work in Bangkok or may not work in Singapore and vice versa. Because it all depends on, number one, on the, the country at the level of development. And number two is the take-up as well. You know, the people who actually use the, for example, the applications or the products or the services. Uh, what products that could be, you know, uh, that could be sold very well in for example, Korea may mm. not work in Philippines, you know, or Australia. So you can't compare. There's no benchmark. Um, a lot of people, like when they talk about, okay, how, you know, a lot of people, okay, what's the success looks like oh, yeah. for the ecosystem, right? Uh, is it the number of unicorns or is it mm. uh, the number of people that are affected by it? You know, so there's various measures uh, measures of um, you know how we call it whether that ecosystem is developed okay. um, in Malaysia we you know we may not have the number of unicorns like mm -hmm. Singapore has but what we look at at the government what we measure is for example the startups that we fund how many jobs uh, they created uh, because to us that is far more important than having 10 unicorns, but they're all based in the US or they're based in Singapore, you know. How many, you know what's, the, what's the ripple impact? What's the GDP that it contributes? Um, and are there any more services that they can facilitate? Like, for example, uh, again, uh, when we talk at Grab, it started off as, um, you know, a platform that provides uh, transportation, but they are now, they are everywhere. They yes. even have an e-supermarket, yeah. you know, they have a payment and things like that. So, so it, it, that's how we measure, you know, like what other touch points uh, okay. are positive, you know, uh, that contributes to mm. the, what they call it, the, uh, you know, uh, economy of the, of the country. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Now, to finally address the not-so-pink elephant in the room, 
COVID-19 has definitely turned the world upside down. So what are some of the internal and external challenges that you have dealt with in Credofund? Okay, perhaps if I could share because um, Cradle Fund is slightly different. Um, I could share you two experiences because I joined Cradle on the 1st of June. Uh, I was at Velasto, which is a public listed company uh, in oil and gas uh, prior to that. Um, and in fact, when the pandemic uh, just started, that was you know late February and March, it also coupled with an oil crash, and I was a chief operating, a chief financial oh, yes. officer of an oil and gas company. So there was one Monday uh, where I was in the office, and that Sunday night I couldn't sleep because I knew that uh, the share price was going to plunge mm. on that Monday morning. So I came into the Monday very coolly, start to turn on my computer and start watching the share price you know from 43 cents plunge down to about 12 cents in about 12 uh, you know like in about 15 minutes and and at the back of my mind okay that's how much of market cap over a billion market cap that was just wiped out you know and uh, to me that experience was probably in fact out of the 26 years probably the most testing uh, experience uh, at that time because uh, a lot of jobs will involve what yes. are we going to do with our asset we haven't signed our accounts yet will that impact our 2020 uh, 2019 financial so there was just so many things and uh, but what is important is you need to prioritize what do you need to do? Okay, what do I have to do for the next 30 minutes? What do I have to do for the next 24 hours? What do we need to do for the next seven days? What do we need to do for the next three months? So, you know, we needed to... So, so, so having a focus and clarity what to do is far more important. And number one, you need to keep cool. As a leader, okay. you need to show that you're panicked. The minute your, it's just like if you're on an aeroplane, right? Mm. If the pilot starts to panic, how would you feel? <laughs> you know, if your doctor is about to, you know, cut you up, suddenly panic looking at you, how would you feel? So the first thing you need to do is like keep cool as a cucumber mm. because that's a sort of, um, you know, um, uh, what they call it, comfort that you need to give to the people around you. Uh, and so I just wanted to share that experience because to me that was... That was, you know, the, the most testing uh, experience. I've gone through a num uh, like four crises before, but this is far the worst uh, uh, ever uh, that I ever experienced in 26 years. You know, then uh, then after that, then I found out that oh, I've got a job. You know, but but I, in I started work at Cradle on Monday, which is first of June. Mm. On that Sunday at ten o'clock, I was still working for Velasto, <laughs> you know. So because because you know they're like, oh please don't go, you know, we're we're having this crisis and I stuff understand. like that. So I was so I was just still working, um, having to negotiate with you know the bankers. At that time, we were still talking to various tax agents, tax consultants, just to make sure that the financials are okay. Okay, now back to 1st of June, then I started to join Cradle. Now, Cradle is a completely different animal, okay? <laughs> okay. Because, you know, we're funded by Ministry of Finance, so I don't have to worry about mm. how I'm going to pay my people, you know, so we've, we still get money from the government uh, to pay our rental, so I don't have to worry about that. Unlike um, when I was at Velasto, we have to worry about, okay, how could we survive for the next number of years. Joint Cradle mm -hmm. completely different. I had no problem with that. But the issue is our startups. Our startups were suffering. So we have about, uh, at that time, we have uh, close to 300 grant recipients. So i.e. Well, okay, just to give you a little bit of a background, when someone gets a grant from us, say for example, 500,000, so we don't give 500,000 immediately and okay. then they disappear, no. Okay. <laughs> you know. So what we do is we will work out with them, okay, what do you need to do for the next two years uh, from A to say for example, K? What is it that we want you to achieve or what you want to achieve over the next two years? Okay, then we will agree on certain milestones. Say, for example, okay, you know, maybe for the next three months, you need to work on getting 
30 more clients you need to be able you know your system or your 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 you know your platform needs to be able to do automatic payment for example you know so we we will work with the startups on a certain milestones then what we do is we disburse money accordingly so for example okay we need uh 40,000 to work on this certain um you know certain feature in our system mm-hmm. okay you do that and once you complete and then we'll pay you x amount 40,000 so that's how it works So we need to monitor. So uh, uh, at any point in time, we need to monitor close to between 200 to 300 startups, and we have a, a five monitoring and disbursement team. And this is when you know I, I I'll just give you an example. Say you want to build a car, right? You've yes. spent two years researching on how to build the best car, okay? And you're just about to put the last finishing. The tire. Mm. Then suddenly, a rule said that you can't drive a car. Uh, What will happen? That happens. That same analogy happens to quite a lot of our startups. I'll give you an example. One of our startups was working on a you know integrated software platform for restaurants. What do you think is going to happen? Okay. So a lot of what they plan, a lot of the things that they build, suddenly. Not able to be rolled out out mm-hmm. there, so it gives a lot of. So some of our startups, they are either going through, you know, they are either going through a lot of them going through financial issues. They mm-hmm. have very short runways. They could only last for two three months um, because they couldn't get the revenue that they were expected. Some of them, their business models completely useless, completely irrelevant. What do they do? A lot of the startups, they put up a lot of a lot of the founders. They put up a lot of money, so they go through a lot of emotional. And mental uh, issues as well. Okay. So, and and so the the problem. So as you can see, the problem when I was at Velasco and Cradle was completely different. Exactly. Um, and so how do we work? How do we? And and so I was running in and out of the ministry to make sure that okay we get the funds. Uh, could we help out? Could we repurpose some of our reserves so that we can provide you know special relief funding to our you know to our startups? Could we work? What are are the agencies? What are the other You know facilities that's provided under the penjana and everything's, you know, the government that we can help uh, our startups to have access to. So we're working around the clock to keep our startups afloat and keep in, keep on giving them motivation. So I was in and out Putrajaya a lot, you know, uh, telling the ministry, okay, this is what our startups, you know, uh, need, and 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 so those were, I suppose, you know, the the as you can see, it, it's different. So any crisis, any thing that you do, uh, nothing is nothing is equal. Nothing is different. So it's just a matter. Of, it's like I said. It's very important. Keep focused. What are your priorities? And work on your priorities. Don't get distracted. And make sure that you bang, bang, bang. And okay, this is done. This is done. This is done. What I have to do next? You know. Well, to have a laser focus. Now, I think you've sort of touched this already. Mm. But what do you think is the single most important trait that a leader should display during the time of crisis? Okay, to me, trust. Um, when I first came into the company, okay, n- not many people knew me. Okay. Uh, and I came in, and then suddenly, oh, boss. Ask me to do this and this and this and this. You know, they may not understand why we have to do this mm. because, on my second third day i had to go you know uh, when i took on this position so i went to see the uh, secretary general of the mosti mm-hmm. so okay what's your expectations and and then i had a chance to meet the minister what are the expectations so these are the expectations and and you see the thing is because i took over at the time of crisis so obviously cradle had to be different compared to cradle three months ago mm-hmm. and so people may not really understand they, they, they think that oh these changes are made because there's a new CEO rather than oh these changes was made because oh. the situation is different right yes. and uh, so and suddenly you know okay we need to do this we need to do this so, so obviously the first few months um, I had to spend Quite a lot of time uh, being transparent with the team mm. that okay, this is what we need to do, and you know you need to trust me and 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 really show their vision because if they don't trust you, um, you know, like okay, 
who the hell are you? You know, like exactly. what's in for me and things like that. So, so you have to, and so to me, there's the the first one month, and it's not easy as well because like half of my people are not in the office. So, and it's very difficult when you first came and then suddenly you're doing Zoom call. There's just no, yeah. you know, intimate, what do you call it? Uh, you know, interaction. It's it's just very 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 fake. Uh, exactly. And. Um, so, so to me, that was the tough part, you know, getting buy-in. Okay, guys, I can't do this alone. I need you to do this. I know it's not fun. Uh, it's not the fun cradle four months ago, but we have to do this because this is, uh, at the end of the day, our mandate is to serve, you know, uh, the startups. Our mandate is to serve the people, and this is what needs to do. So trust is very important because like it's just like when you go to the war right mm. when you go to war you just have to trust the general if you don't trust the general that they're going to take care of you then you know everyone is everywhere over the place and then as a leader you can't charge um, into the real war if you don't have the people to thank you up yeah so communication is very important mm. you know and and like i said keep cool don't panic because there's also a lot of uncertainty, um, you know, by the staff when I first came in, like, mm -hmm. oh, are we still going to be around? Uh, what's mm -hmm. going to happen? You know, is uh, the government still continue to give us money? Will I have a job? So there's a lot of, um, you know, unsettled at the moment. So the first thing that you need to do is, is to manage that and, and get... Uh, people buying and people running behind. I still have a tough time. There's still, you know, a few people who just like refuse to, you okay. know, jump on the ship. But sometimes I can't have 100% people on the ship uh, as long as I have the right general. So, for example, if you're going to be on a ship, you, ne you need the important crew, right? You, who, who are your important crew? Not all of them. Like, for example, if some of them choose not to jump on the ship, then, you know, there's nothing that I can do. But those who are, you know, the skipper, the... The, I don't know, I don't really know how to run a ship, but you know, well, like I said, the, you're most general, so you need to quickly mobilize who uh, you get by into being your general, mm -hmm. then you just have to go and, you know, yeah. I understand. So I think this is such a wonderful key takeaway for all club presidents in Uni Raza. I know you guys, president, are not able to meet your committee members, but remember, trust is the key. <laughs> trust is the human currency, always, always, always. Now, also moving on again to a more personal front, what has the crisis taught you about your own leadership style? Okay, hmm. I think um, for me, is grateful, being mm -hmm. grateful, the right. crisis because you know you read a lot. People don't know what they're going to eat the next day. A lot of people have lost jobs, you know. And to me, whatever you have, uh, we need. To feel grateful you know the, the the gratefulness i think taught me a lot and uh, it also taught me that life could actually be simple in fact we're the one who makes it complicated you know? yes. <laughs> because i can't go to the malls i suddenly realized i don't need that many clothes you know i don't need that many shoes i don't need that many handbags you know uh, and 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 yeah so so to me i am just grateful that you know i I'm healthy, I have my family, I, you know, I, I know what I can eat the next day. So that's what the crisis uh, has taught me. What's important and what you can live without. understand because honestly I feel slapped there because honestly for now throughout the crisis, my only concern is the number of likes I have on my Instagram <laughs> post, which is very unhealthy. Anyway, moving forward. You are a CEO and also a mother of three. Mm -hmm. How, what is the strategy that you employ to keep yourself together? You know, to always be ahead of the time and also to have your energy consistently high. How do you do it? Okay. Um, now, what I've learned, uh, you know, how I experiment with myself is that um, I've learned not to feel guilty. You know, oh. um, I've learned not to feel guilty. When I was, uh, you know, before, oh, if I don't spend enough time with my son, I feel guilty. Or if I don't spend enough time with this, you know, I feel guilty. But actually, 
they are okay. <laughs> you know, they they are actually okay. They they understand. And uh, and when you feel guilt, then you know when you're working, you're thinking about your family. When your family, you're thinking about working. You know, so so to me, I've learned to compartmentalize. So if I'm at work, uh, I'm focused at work. If I'm, you know, with my family, I focus with my family. Of course, it's not easy, um, you know that. And what's also important is to have your me time. Oh, yes. You know, uh, your me time. So, like, like early in the morning is my me time. So I either go for a run or I oh. go for my exercise. So I spend at least one and a half hours, um, you know, just having my me time. And occasionally I will, you know, like this morning I cycle with my son. Okay, that's a bit of bonding, but it's very important to and and not to feel guilty because you have this time. Um, and when you are with your family, you're focused in your family. So I think quality is more important uh, mm -hmm. rather than quantity and. And I'm very lucky because I have a very uh, understanding family. Uh, so my kids, they, they, they understand I'm a working mother since day one. So they understand when I have to work. Uh, in fact, they like it that I'm working, you know, that I don't have to harass them or okay, stop playing games and things like that, you know. <laughs> in fact, like when I'm working from home, it's like, why are you not in the office, you know, things like that. So, um, and like I said, uh, you need to make sure that you have the right support system. Yes. So in the office, you need to make sure that you know, you're know you surrounded by people who support you. Um, and if they're not there, then don't feel guilty about you know cutting them off. So yes. uh, because you have to carry yourself and you can't be carrying like, you know, 20 people around you. They, mm. they need, we need to carry each other. So. Uh, to me, that's very important. And make sure that try like, like to take shortcuts. Um, so instead of trying to do five things, can mm -hmm. I achieve the same thing with three things? <laughs> so, okay. you know, like for example, I, I, I use technology a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm everywhere with my iPad uh, so that um, Today, this morning, I had a con call and at the same time, I was doing my presentation for my presentation on Monday so I could multitask. Um, so while waiting at the bank, I will do work. In that 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I will do work. So that's how you need to manage because, um, yeah. <laughs> then, because I could achieve uh, more things in a short term, then I have more time to relax and mm. watch Netflix. You know? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so try to, uh, how to say, try, try to work for, you know, imagine your time as money. You yes. know, what can you achieve in that one minute? So you need to, you need to spend time to relax as well. So you can't be just working, 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 you know. You, you, so, so that one hour that I want to relax, I don't do any work. I don't, you know, I tell my kids not to disturb me. So, but when I'm with my kid, you know, okay, then I spend time with them. So, so optimize that every single moment that you have if you want to achieve a lot. Understand, every moment counts, okay? <laughs> so lastly, for this session, right, because most of our students here are, we are students. Some of us are bound to be graduating in three months' time, in six months' time. But then again, COVID-19 has shaken the job market. Competition is tight. So what do you think, in your opinion, is the one skill that we should have that can get us a job? Or okay. maybe set us apart? To me, I have interviewed so many people and mm. a lot of people have worked for me. At the end of the day, Skill is important. There's no specific skills that are more important than the other. For me, what I value is attitude. Okay, attitude to learn. Okay. Because, uh, like for example, uh, you may be an accountant degree, okay, and you only know numbers, right? Suddenly you come in, you have to do a video and explain how does this theory works okay. you know so don't be afraid to learn how to edit the video you know so so to me the people that i see who are successful is they are open to do new things mm. and they're not like oh i don't know uh, i only learned this at university so i don't want to do other things you know uh, i have done so many other things that people thought that huh you're an accountant but you've you've had to done this you know you, you've had to do this um, 
and be open to learn different things because that's that's what it is you know the world now is all about problem solving it's all about yes. multitasking it's all about connecting the dots so if you're just like oh i'm just doing science and i don't care about how to make money then you're not mm-hmm. you know you're not going to survive so to me at the end of the day the people that i value more uh, at work are the people with uh, an open attitude and the people who are teamwork uh, skills you can learn or you can you can buy like oh i don't know how to do this i can always ask around who oh, can yes. do this that's yes, true you know so at the end of the day you want what matters is you want to achieve something you want to problem solve something so if you don't have that capability you can either acquire or you can either get from someone else but okay i want to solve this problem okay boss this project is completed this project is done it's been successful so to me my advice to people is, is that uh, be open minded Uh, just because you score what 100% and you know this test okay. at the end of the day you know when you're in the office out there it's not relevant you know mm. uh, it's not relevant if you're just going to suck at your desk and you know I don't want to do this because I don't like this you know so yeah <laughs> so yeah keep being a student in life people. yes yes keep to me your student and learning should not stop the minute you leave yes. the you leave the door out here i am still learning in fact i'm learning a lot from my staff mm. you know from my children i learn from my children you know mm. i learn from people who just come in so you need to have an open mind that you know you don't just learn from people who are older than you and people who are more experienced than you sometimes people who have the least experience you know they can come up with brilliant ideas you know they could probably done something when they were somewhere or they could heard about it you know when they talk to their boyfriends or when they talk about it with their parents you know you learn a lot so you that's another thing like don't let ego uh, yes, you know yes, stop yes. you 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 can learn everywhere and hence why for me even like being here i learn something you know i learn a lot you know so have an open mind so to me at the end of the day attitude will get up you there rather than you know the results that you get you know in your in your test <laughs> it brings you far. that's important <laughs> not to say that oh you know Rafisa said it's not important so I don't have to study for my test no 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 don't get me wrong you know that is the minimum but it's not going to guarantee you Oh, that actually reminds me that recently <laughs> you you completed your study, right? Your mm. postgraduate diploma in strategy and innovation at Said Business School, University of Oxford. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations on that Thank as well. Thank you. See. Okay. Now we have completed the first half of the session, yeah. and then we have also gathered some question from our audience. Okay. Now from Wallace, we have this. What are the challenges for you to switch from consultation, nature of your work? to be the top executive for the multinational company. Okay. When you're a consultant, mm. you could come up with a proposal and then okay, here it is in time. This is your problem after this, you know. <laughs> so, when you are an executive in a in the company, you actually have to do the work, you know. Uh and and of course, you know, it helps by the consultant. So, To me the, the the challenges is that sometimes when you look at a proposal okay this is a project you might think that it's easy but when you're actually in the middle of it suddenly there are issues that you never thought of mm-hmm. uh so to me that's the the challenges and you need to continue to synthesize with a lot of people and be open to talk hey i'm facing this issue like like i have a, a network of friends that i'm constantly hey, how, how what do i do this you know so so what's important is for you to surround yourself with experts so you need you know uh, you need to have a friend lawyer you need to have a friend who works in the government you have to have a friend who's in tax and so to me uh solving the problem is actually um you know actually doing it rather than come up with a proposal to me that's one of the challenges that i find okay moving on we have a question from amirul being a female leader does it come with say a higher set of expectation like do you ever feel like you have to work just a little bit harder to prove yourself honestly i wonder as well do women have to be men enough for us to be recognized Um okay to me it it all comes from yourself mm. you know 
actually, when I look at, say for example, if I have two managers, right, and one is a male and one is a female, I never expect the female to prove herself or the male to prove themselves, you know. So actually, the, the, that expectation comes from your own. You, you, oh. you know, I think women tend to have, how do you call it, lower self-confidence. Yes. So they feel like as if, oh, I, I need to do more because mm -hmm. I'm not good enough, which is something that uh, it's not easy because I went through that a lot as well because I, you know, when I first started work, obviously I see a man, you know, oh, wow, they're, they're better than me and things like that. So initially, but I think over the years, when suddenly you realize that people don't treat you differently, you know, I have so many people that don't treat me differently just because I'm a female or expect okay. me to work harder just because I'm female. No, people don't do that. You don't do that to other people, right? Yeah. I mean, you see, you see someone, uh, a male and a female, you don't expect, hey, just because you're a female, you have to work, you know, longer hours than yeah, this yeah. guy. No, you don't. But it actually comes from within you. That's what I learned. And then after that, I, you know, begin to think that, oh, okay, actually, that's, that's quite irrelevant, you know. Okay. Um, and women do have, actually, no, that's not true. I, I mean, I, we, we can't stereotype. Uh, women are better at this or men are better at this. I mean, I, okay. you know, uh, that each person being male or female, mm. they have their own individuality and they have their okay. own strengths. So, but it's just that uh, I always tell this just to my staff. The, the things that we don't do a lot is we don't give positive feedback. We tend to give negative feedback. Okay. Yeah. You know, we you know when someone opens the door to you, you don't think about it. You know, but when someone slams the door to you, you know it yes, gets into yes, you yes, for the rest yes, of the day, yes. right? So, yeah. So I think that's that's the things about what we need to do uh, with either women or men or yeah. I don't know where that answers your question. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that does, that does. Yeah, because I used to like, you know, be, yeah. I used to limit myself because I thought like, I need to be man enough, but I'm too feminine no. to be a man, so. No, 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 no. Now, moving on. Yeah. From Mitra Stanley, share mm. us a time that you have to make a risky decision and why. Okay. Spicy here. Risky decision. Yeah. Oh, I deal with risks every day. <laughs> <laughs> As a CEO, you have to make a decision. And some of the decision can be, you know, uh, may not be risky to you, but will be risky to others. Oh, yes. Uh, I think what you need to do is you need to, to look at all the facts that you have at that point in time and make, you know, whatever decision that you feel is right. Okay? But what's more important is the consequence of the decision that you make, all right? Yes. Uh, often I find that a lot of people, is they, they keep on changing their minds, you know, one day they are this and then yes. suddenly, alamak, you know, be so, no lah, you know, I changed my mind and things about this, you know, because it could be a better decision, but once you've made that decision, you have to stick to it because otherwise, you know, everyone will be like, huh? where to go A or B or C or D. Oh, we're already going A. Then suddenly, A, actually B is more better lah. No, no, no. Stick to A and yes. make that A better. Yes, yes. You know, so because you never know. Suddenly, you want to go into B and then suddenly got pothole, you mm. know, which you didn't see at that time. But before that, you thought, oh, it's going to be a straight, straight. So whatever it is, to me, what's more important is not so much about making the best decision. You will never know whether your decision is the best or not. But once you make a decision, you better them well stick to it, you know. True. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mo moving on. The next question is, at some point in life, we feel like we hit rock bottom. Mm. How do we get back up quickly by Asha Devi? Asha Devi. Okay. I... I've, okay, to me, right, if I feel like that, imagine like you are at the, you know, say for example, you're at a mountain, right? So you're, yes. you're here and you feel that there's a rock bottom. Mm. Imagine like, oh, somewhere there, there's like another sand pit. <laughs> so you better climb out quickly before you go into the sand pit. Uh, so that's how I see it. And um, 
it happens to me a lot. Mm, it, yes. it happens to me in you know professionally, personally, and things like that. But what's more important is that uh, get on with it. Mm. You know, close the chapter quickly. Okay. Uh, put out your band aid, whatever that you need to do. Say, for example, if you fell, right? Put that band aid quickly. Gather your strengths and climb out of it. So to me, that's how I feel because I feel that if I don't do that, then I will sink in into the, you know, another sinkhole. So yeah. True, true. Now moving on, we have a question from Iza. You are still very young. No, yes, I'm you not. Are. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. And congrats, you are a CEO already. Wow, very flattering, Iza. I've got a daughter who is probably a lot of your age, you know. Oh, so wow. yeah. <laughs> so what do you aspire to achieve before you reach 90? Nano scenarian. Before <laughs> I, don't I reach 90. Exactly. Okay. Well, to me, look, I've never seen. I've never see CEO as the end goal that I want to have in life. Okay. It's not uh, just because I've become a CEO, you know, okay, that's it. Um, for me, I, I, I feel that I have a lot more fulfillment. The reason why I took this job, yes. it's not so much because of the title or because I have a driver and things like that. It's because the fact that I could actually help a lot of people. You know, so to me, that is my purpose, mm. uh, helping the startups uh, and then seeing them grow. And that's why we call it cradle, right? So, oh, yes. You know, <laughs> that and seeing them grow and seeing them getting awards mm. and being on news and newspapers. So, so to me, that is... So when later on, you know, I, I would love to, you know, become mentors of this, okay. uh, these startups and... So to, I, that's that's what I wish, you know, I'll, I'll post a CEO because, yeah. Mentoring for life. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Then we have Firdaus asking, what is the takeaway you can give us as the young graduate and students who have the same background as you since you started with accounting and finance? Very lengthy, Firdaus. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you. All right. Like I said, um, what you learn at university is not so much about what you read in the book hmm. but the application of what you read to you know the, the the problem that you face so for example you learn about double entry hmm. okay but that, what does it mean how do you apply that i don't know whether it is there's still double entry okay. <laughs> how do you apply that to solve a problem so to me that's what important is hmm. so Say for example, you you learn how to address this, but yeah, yeah. Understood. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, I was talking so like that. It's been <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's the same thing. Like like you mentioned, I I did a postgraduate uh, degree, right? Yes, yes. So a lot of the times we don't we okay we spend five ten percent of it learning about the theory, mm -hmm. but seventy percent of the time. We work on case studies. So, what do you learn? Say, for example, you know what you learn a, a particular theory. How do you apply it to to the case studies? To and the case studies, these are you know real companies case studies. So we learn about you know Alibaba. We learn about uh, Ferrari. We learn about Volkswagen, and we learn about IBM. So, how do you apply those theories or what you learn? to solve the problem mm -hmm. so it's the same thing and it's the same with accounting a degree with yes. whether you learn about uh, physics mm -hmm. or medicine or biology so it's not so much about what you learn it's what you do with what you learn how do you transfer the knowledge to different sides of things now from Dewi three words to describe yourself I think I know her okay. <laughs> okay. hi Dewi <laughs> Three words to exactly. Uh, energy. Yes, can <laughs> see that. <laughs> energy, um, positive. Okay. Um, and how to say? My kids will call me bossy. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A lady boss in the office and at home. Very very mm. well. Now, do you see yourself as a reader? Well, I'm just wondering. Reader, no, uh, I don't read as much as I would love to. Okay. Um, I actually spend a lot of time talking to people, mm. uh, you know, learning about what they do. Uh, to, to me, 
I read, I, I read a lot of like, for example, news articles, mm -hmm. you know, uh, first, one of the first, first few things that I, I, I do in the morning, okay, what, what happened, some of, but I don't, I mean, honestly, read the whole article, mm -hmm. I will scan, so I get all these emails from either Business uh, Insider, oh, Tech yes, Review, yes. you know, um, all that, so what's really happening, and I, I the edge, the star, so, yes. Um, so I get a lot of summary of this, mm -hmm. you know, and then if it's something, okay, something important, then I will read the whole article. So I spend a lot of that time reading. I hear, uh, I listen to podcasts a yes, lot. Yes. Uh, so sometimes when I go for a walk, so you can't really read, right? So you, yes. you listen to podcasts. So that's very important. But what I learn is mm -hmm. by talking, networking with different people. So. Um, you know, I I make time once every week. You know, mm -hmm. I will catch try to catch up with someone. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, it's like instead of reading books, you are reading people. Yeah, <laughs> every week. Now, from Muzame, okay, outside your CEO related role, who mm -hmm. are you? Who is Rafiza? Ah, um, I okay. Number one, <laughs> some of you know people we know. I I love to do sports. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I run. I recently take up cycling. Okay. Uh, I can swim, although not very well. Not as good as my husband. Uh, I do yoga. I do oh, yoga wow. four five times a day. So I, I love anything to do uh, that's positive to mm. my well being and my health. Yes, yes. I try to take care of my health as much as possible. Mm. Um, and. Outside of CEO, I'm just Rafiza. I'm just ordinary. Woman. I mean, like, okay. look, I'm not a superwoman. I'm just an ordinary person, you okay. know, who happens to have a big responsibility in the side of equity stuff. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Next, from Atika, everybody has a hero that they look up to. Who is your hero? The person you respect the most? Uh, uh, my mother, definitely. Um, she has always been, you know, my role model. Um, the person who gave me the most comfort uh, at, you know, the, the toughest time. So to me, sometimes, you know, for me, I don't feel a hero needs to be someone, wow, you know, someone yes. who have done so many things, mm -hmm. you know. The hero is someone that you think first, when you are at the most difficult time. So, you know, for me, sorry Abah, you know, not to say that you're less important, but <laughs> <laughs> you're important as well. But for me, my mother has always been the comfort when I feel that, you know, when I think of her, mm -hmm. I will smile. Uh, so, yeah, so to me, that's my hero. Like a security blanket. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. you too, mom. <laughs> you're watching. <laughs> Now from Nick Iza, I think you have sort of touched this actually. Mm. What is the most important factor that gets people the job? Mm. For me, okay, mm. when I interview a person, um, because at the end of the day, the person that you hire is going to be the ambassador of your company, right? So number one is how they carry themselves. Are they positive? Mm. Uh, or are they going to be the one who's always complaining? Oh, yeah. Um, so are they positive? Are they open to new challenges? Mm. Um, um, doesn't have to be confidence. I've hired okay. people who probably are not, you know, doesn't seem to be aggressive or, okay. you know, look, you don't need, you know, a super duper A type of person in your company okay. because you do need people who are sometimes, you know, they may appear quiet, but they have a lot of ideas. So sometimes personality to me is less important, but, you know, but to me, like I said, the attitude and, yeah. um, whether you have the drive mm -hmm. to do something so to me that's why important so you don't have to be very aggressive you don't have mm -hmm. to show you know like i've i've had a lot of very very good staff who are quiet mm -hmm. but they do brilliant work you know and okay. they're very resilient uh, you put them a, under a lot of stress and they're okay you know like so i understand <laughs> so yes to all resiliency my is also friends. another important ah, that you don't flutter and give up easily so resiliency because at every point in time when you work you will face with challenges yes. so if you're not afraid to face challenges okay challenges is one just one of the things that you come across let's deal with it then that's also a good attribute yeah. I understand 
And lastly, right, from Siti Nordiana, and I find it's really interesting. If you can only ask one question in a job interview, what would it be? Oh, wow. Why do you want this job? Okay. <laughs> so to me, that's it. If a person say that, oh, I want this job because of the money, okay, get out. <laughs> you know? okay. Yes, you know, so um, I always ask, to me, if I only have one, why do you want this job? Okay. okay. Start with why. Make sure you practice that. <laughs> and make sure tonight. you are genuine about it because the okay. interviewer can detect. I can detect whether a person is genuine or not. So okay. don't lie. The minute you lie, that's it. Credibility of the ground. Because you never know. You know, this person, you might not get a job, but could be a good friend of, uh, you know, the boss of who you're trying to find a job with. KL is very small. So yes. you might think that, oh, okay, I can screw up with this interview. Okay. But, you know, don't, you know, I, I may be a very good friend or, you know, whoever that's with another. And also, don't piss off your boss, you know. If okay. you think, uh, sometimes a lot of people, when they resign, okay, that's it, I don't have to do with her anymore. But you never know. Him or her could be a very good friend. And, and as bosses, as CEOs, we always talk to each other. Hey, okay. What do you think of that stuff? What do you think of that stuff? So, you know credibility reputation you might think that okay that's fine i'm not going to work in this company anymore but you never know so reputation you know make sure that you keep your reputation clean understand understand oh wow this has been a super productive conversation and i, I can love really it. feel your energy radiating <laughs> to me <laughs> so thank you so much for everything and thank you for everybody who has been tuning in thank See you, you so time. much thank you so much um uh, uniraza for inviting me thank you Right. Done. Done. <laughs> <laughs>